Oh, thank you so much. I'm very nervous. I'm being very honest with you. After all these amazing activists, amazing leaders here, well-known activists, I thought that how I'm going to start. Because look, I actually thought about it. I'm going to say that um, I had the dream to be the woman of the year of Time magazine when I was a child. But to be honest, no, in my small village, I didn't know even that Time Magazine exists. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you why. I actually was told that um, I have to dress up for tonight. So my husband said that, think about it, you know. So I spent two hours. I came back home and I said, I bought it. This is it. <laughs> But there is a story behind it. There is a story behind it. I bought this for tonight because this should be on my head and cover my massive hair. And if I don't cover my hair, I get killed. Just waving this. Think about it. How many women are here? Hands up. How many women are here? Hands up. All of you, you get killed if you don't cover your hair. If you wave your headscarf in public, you get raped or you lose your eyes. That's why I decided to come here with my women, with my heroes. Time Magazine, please don't change your mind. I know here, we are here to laugh. We are here to celebrate, but I couldn't. I said to myself that I'm gonna go there and name them. Ghazal, Nilufar, Hanane, Elohe, and many of them. And believe me, anytime when I go home after giving talk somewhere, I feel guilty because they are not numbers. They are not statistics. I wanna name them all. So that is why I came here to tell you that I dedicate tonight to women of Iran. They are wounded. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They are wounded, but unbowed, unbreakable. For years and years, when I launched my campaign against compulsory hijab, Many uh, women in the West were telling me that, oh, Middle East has got so many bigger problems. Let's not talk about this small piece of cloth. But listen, all of you, think about it. If someone else tell you what to wear, if someone else make decision over your own body, if someone else tell you that you're not allowed to ride a bicycle, if someone else tell you that you're not allowed to dance, to sing, to be a president, to be a judge, to be happy, to be your true self. You say this is a small issue? No. When you shout here, my body, my choice, I was with you. I was shouting, my body, my choice, here in America. And I was calling my friends in Iran and telling them that, wow, this is the first time in my life I'm in a demonstration, nobody killed me, nobody attacked me. <laughs> but at the same time, I asked my fellow sisters in the West, now join me. Say, my body, my choice when you go to Iran, when you go to Afghanistan. You know what happened? Many Western feminists, they bowed to Islamic Republic. They covered their hair. Don't. Believe me, supporting your sisters do not make you Islamophobic. My mom wears hijab. My mom is a true representative of my culture, not the Islamic Republic. Islamic Republic is a gender apartheid regime. And I want to tell you that. Don't think that, oh, Massey is loud because she's miles away from Iran. No. The Islamic Republic to send three men to kill me in New York. Yeah. As you see that, I am not carrying any weapon and I'm only 45 kilos. So, but they are scared of me and millions of women who say no to them. So please join me. I'm, don't, believe, don't believe those who tell you that, you know, let them deal with their own problems, let them deal and fix their own problems. We have to keep the sisterhood, we have to hug each other and we have to stick together. 
Believe me, I'm scared as well sometimes. But you know what? When they sent people here to kill me, I said to myself that they are scared of me as well. My mom told me, yes, yes. So my mom, I grew up in a very tiny village. We didn't have electricity in our tiny village. We, had, we didn't even have like inside bathroom. We had outhouse. During the night, it was very scary to go to the outhouse. Imagine, eight years old girl. And my mom, she's not even able to read and write. She told me that darkness is like a monster. If you're scared of the darkness, the darkness can swallow you all. The darkness can devour you. But instead of being scared of the darkness, just open your eyes as wide as you can. Then the darkness will disappear. And as a kid, I thought this was a fact. So I used to open my eyes as wide as I could. And it worked. It worked. So we, the women of the Middle East, we experienced a lot of darkness in our life. And we learned how to open our eyes. I want to tell you that my mom is not allowed to share her love with me. They did everything to break me. They put my brother in prison for two years to punish me. They arrested 29 women of my campaign to and bring them on TV to denounce me. They did everything to break me, but I am here to break them. I am here to break them. And I thank you. I want to dedicate tonight to one mother, one mother called Nahid Shirpiche. Now she is my mother. She was with her son in Iran protest, hand in hand. But the Islamic Republic killed her son in front of her eyes. How many mothers are here? Hands up. What would you do if they kill your son, your daughter? She did the same. She said, I am here seeking for justice. And now she's in jail. She is my hero. And I want you to join me to be the voice of Iranian mothers for justice, to be the voice of Iranian brave girls and women who say that, the Islamic Republic can take our eyes, can take our body, can take our life, but not our hope. So join us and let us to say the Islamic Republic is a gender apartheid regime. Call the leaders of democratic countries to be as united as dictators and help us and recognize the revolution, which is called woman, life, freedom, woman, life, freedom. Thank you so much.